Ready! Set! Move! Set! Move! What you gotta do? Fire superiority. We dictate the pace. I do not lose. Move! Fire! Move! Fire! Y'all step up to the line, everybody on line at one time. Right, right side, move, right side, move. Shoot, shoot, shoot. The bullet goes in before I can really see. Get the gun up, get the gun up. When you're on a range, you're doing various drills. Sometimes it requires having an empty gun so you can reload it. Sometimes it has one bullet, then it goes dry, and then you reload it. Sometimes it, it's another round count, right? So on a range, it's even more important to double check things, right? Which gives you a good system built in because you learn to do that. You build into those systems and you learn to always, when you've spent some time away from the gun or something's changed, to check that thing when it's applicable, right? administratively. So always know the condition of your gun. So if I need to check it, there's no gay shit like, oh, you, you must be an inexperienced shithead because you had to check and see if your gun's loaded. I don't play that game, man. You always make sure, like, if you ever get to the point where you think, I'm so good that I don't need to check my gun all the time, then I'm not going to call you a name, but I think that's, that's kind of ignorant. We're all human. Like, I don't know, I don't care how high speed you are, or more, how much experience you have with a gun, when you're doing things, you forget the status of your gun. That being said, never lay down a loaded gun. I don't care if you keep the gun slung on you and it's gonna be a hot range today, so I'm not gonna make you unload every time we move around or when you come off the line, as long as you're behaving safely, right? But if you sit your gun down off your body, we're gonna unload it. Never point your muzzle at anything that doesn't need the muzzle pointed at it. What else do you not do until it's your time to fire? Is put your finger on the trigger. So that's another redundancy, right? Because if my finger's not on the trigger and it's not a hot round that's gonna go off on its own, then I don't have to worry about it shooting me. But the barrel's not pointed at anything anyway, so if I do screw up that one safety rule, then I've got a backup. But I want both rules adhered to, follow me? So finger off the trigger until it's time to fire. And uh, that's very important once you get up to mixed stage in the pistol. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, guys, just humor me. But you know, when you get that pistol out, a lot of people go straight to that trigger right away. The rifle is a little bit harder because it's kind of not pointed at your body a lot of times anyway. You can get away with it for a long time and not be scary, but you want to develop those good habits, right? We're building up, right? Some of this stuff is not going to be that advanced, but I got I to gotta make sure everybody's on the same playing field, right? The idea is to start thinking about getting online, returning fire. Now, we could talk about all the different scenarios, apocalyptic shit, when you would be in a group like this and have to operate as a team and I, I don't really care to think about that I mean I know if something happened where I had to have a gun it seems like you already subscribe to the idea that you need a weapon that is a rifle or you wouldn't have them so why would you have it if you couldn't use it for something that might happen so the likelihood of that happening it don't really matter to me the likelihood of of getting cancer may not be that high for me but you know I still don't around near power lines and shit, right? So this is gonna build up going towards team movement, react to contact. There's a battle drill in an infantry manual from the army, I was in the army, and it's called the 7-8, right? It was like the infantry bible, they called it. I started out in the infantry and then I went at special forces later. But it was the infantry bible. And we got in the, in the field and did this shit all the time. React to contact as a team. And people don't understand, it's lost on them because of all this sensationalized flat range shooting that's cool, it's great. It builds individual skills and competencies, but it's not putting everything together, right? There's only so much you can do on a flat range, but one thing that nobody does really, because a lot of times you're with people that you don't know, and I don't want to run around with you, but if I don't know you and you got a gun, I just don't trust you like that. It's not worth the risk to me. So we're gonna move towards that. That's why we're doing airsoft at the end of these three days, right, the final day, because once you actually start moving as a group, I don't want you to have to worry about your buddy killing you with a live round because you don't know everybody and that's understandable. 
we're going to use airsoft. And plus, the force-on-force -force dynamic changes the whole game if you've never done that before, right? You learn what suppressive fire is, and it's not a bad word as long as it's effective, semi-acceptable, accurate suppressive fire that gets you to where you want to be, right? If I can't hit the guy, I'm, I'm not just going to stand out in the open and let him shoot at me even though I can't hit him effectively. I'm going to make sure his head stays down. And that's a very important concept that you got to understand. One of those other concepts is getting online with somebody, right? It's not just simply turning and shooting. You have to be aware of who's around you. I need to orient myself and I need to find where the fire is coming from, which is not always uh, easy to identify, especially if I was right here and somebody shot and there was an echo of some sort and I can't really tell and I didn't hear a whiz, all right? And I don't know exactly where an enemy is. All right? I have to orient myself and then, depending on where I am in a formation with others or in a group with others, I can't just turn and shoot this way if my, my target's over there and air is shooting that way. What's the, the risk here? So if air is looking that way, shooting, well, I don't know what the he might do. I'm crazy. If, he's get, if you're getting shot at and somebody's hitting near you, are you going to jerk a little bit, move around a little bit? Maybe he decided, I need to get near that tree stump over there. And I'm like, I'm offline with him. And I'm shooting right here. And I'm just not, a human is not fast enough to react to some of these situations when I'm shooting, looking at my sights, somewhat tunnel vision, right? Freak the out. This guy, he's freaked the out he's not looking left and right and worried about being online because he expects me to be online like i should be and he just moves and i'm shooting you think i'm gonna react and be like oh almost got you right that i'm that turn switched on maybe that's possible to be switched on like that but under combat stress or stress of somebody trying to kill you and when i say combat i mean civilian anybody combat to me is somebody trying to kill you and you trying to kill them to keep them from killing you right so it applies to you so in that amount of stress and that, in that situation, I'm probably gonna shoot that guy. And good thing you learn how to put a tourniquet on. And hopefully it's not in his cavity or his body. It's only one of his limbs, so you can put a tourniquet on. Otherwise you're stuffing, which you'll learn about tomorrow, which really sucks. So we got to understand the concept of orienting ourselves, getting fire effectively and aggressively on that guy so he can't dictate the, uh, the momentum, right, to us and he can't maneuver on us. Has anybody seen that video oh, a couple years back? I think it was a couple years, Dallas SWAT. There's a guy shooting up people, right? And uh, there's a video online, somebody's up in a hotel or a higher building and they were doing it with their phone. And it showed uh, one of the Dallas guys had his body armor on, the cops. He was behind a big pillar, kind of outside, and he's returning fire uh, back and forth with the bad guy. And he shoots around the pillar, boom, boom, boom. And he's like, all right, now he takes his eyes off the bad guy and he's kind of creeping around over here, uh, kind of aggressively, not as aggressively as I, I've come to know that you need to be in the, those type of situations. But he's moving around, trying to get to the other side of that pillar. Yeah, it was good, good thought. He's thinking, don't pop up in the same spot twice, right, probably. Like I shot from here, let me get over here and get an angle. He took too long. That other guy was more aggressive than him. And I think the guy used to be prior service or something, the crazy guy that was killing people, and he assaulted forward because he knew one thing and was able to implement it better than that cop at that time. God bless him. He's dead, right? He knew that I need to assault forward. I need to maneuver on him. I don't take my eyes off the enemy. I push forward. I take the fight to him, and I win in that moment. I can't hunker down. I'm moving forward. And I knew, and he knew that, that this or a helmet or any thing like Drew's got on here is not the cover is not the best cover if I'm running from the top of that hill down here this is your cover this is your cover because I'm gonna make you put your head down I'm gonna make you hug that ground I'm gonna make you hug something and I'm gonna be able to maneuver on you because I'm gonna put bullets towards you and that's what that guy did in that Dallas situation he came in that guy started going around uh, the pillar like Aaron is now and this guy just assaulted forward went right around behind him and shot him down right in his back and on the ground and then continued on. So today, real easy, real basic shit. We're gonna talk about moving online, engaging quickly, as quickly as you can, so it's accurate, right? We're gonna do it slow so you can be accurate at first and then eventually you're gonna see that you can't always be that accurate when you're trying to really defend yourself. And we're gonna practice uh, first standing and then go to kneeling Right? Talk about the best way to do that and the best way to get back up and how you get back up. What do you think about before you move? Not a rangeism where you're like out here with the ninjas going. 
like this, right? I don't do that shit all the time unless there's a reason or a context for it. When I'm shooting with guys I don't know, I look at them to make sure they're not doing something crazy or if they moved offline, I make sure they're not shooting from behind me, right? Our context here is develop good habits as far as moving with a team. Before I make a movement, I need to see where I'm going first and I need to make sure that I'm not about to put myself in harm's way or impede fire because my buddy's shooting is my cover if I have to move in the open and he's, and I'm not able to shoot while I'm moving, right? Not accurately anyway. He's my cover. So we're gonna build some habits of seeing, seeing what is going on before I move. And you'll see, especially, when there's a lot of fire going on, when there's guys around you shooting, you don't hear people talking, you get real tunnel vision. It's like being, you ever, you ever held your breath and went to the bottom of the deep end? Or so calm, we was talking about it yesterday, right? So quiet, right? It's like that, you're in your own world because all that noise just cancels out and you're looking at sights, you're looking at what the they're doing. You have to snap out of that, see what's around you, right? Not a stupid rangeism shit that people do and don't even know why they're doing it, but for a reason. And then also we're gonna end up going into the prone and going into the prone can be dangerous and it can hurt you if you don't do it right, right? Especially when you get in a hurry. So we're just gonna talk, break that down a little bit, right? I've knocked a tooth out before going into the prone when I was a young private on a gun because I jumped down, you know, happy and motivated as Rear sight just hit me right in my damn tooth, knocked it out. I kept fighting and I spit it out. Didn't realize I lost a tooth yet until I come back later. Anyway, so this is the progression. The end state is you're gonna be, to be able to maneuver effectively and safely as a team. And you're gonna, gonna understand uh, that dynamic within a fire team, which is, there's two fire teams. I'm, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but I'm just gonna give everybody the same spill. There's two fire teams in a squad. Nine man squad has four or five guys in a fire team. There's a team leader on each fire team and they report to the squad leader who's in charge of the squad. I'm gonna play the squad leader by the end of this three days. And we're gonna run through this shit and we're gonna assault forward and know if I was on the streets and I met up with Aaron here and I said, didn't know him from any body, I know how to organize us into a way that we can be effective and get, uh, assault through the enemy and, and live out here. If there was a context or the situation that dictated that, right? So I can meet up here and say, hey, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna be A, I'm gonna be B. You be in charge of them, man. Hey, you just move forward, we'll talk to each other. I'll say, hey, cover me while I move. Um, you let me know you got me covered. You gotta yell, man, cause I, you know we're gonna be shooting. And then I'll let you know before I'm moving and I'll let you know when I'm set so that way you know I'll be firing for you when you start moving. Cool, that's it, man. Let's practice it a couple times and then when we get out on the streets and the zombies attack, are the guys trying to take all our shit because they don't got no more food? We're gonna kill them. And we're gonna do it in an organized manner, organized chaos. Anybody know what the definition of a battle drill is? I don't mean to sound so Rambo, right? But there are some good things that I've got from the military that really apply, as long as we think about them right. I know that everything that we did in the military doesn't apply to the civilian world, right? And I know that everything's not just a firefight. But the definition of a battle drill is a lot similar to anything that you're going to do in a life a threatening situation, especially if you got your buddies with you. A battle drill could be you and your, your kids in a restaurant, right? Somebody comes in shooting, this is our battle drill. Y'all get the f down behind this big oak table that we're at and then start looking to try to get to that back door. I'm going to make sure you get out and then I'm going to stay in here. You get to the car, call 911, whatever, and I'm going to do what I can to f kill this Right, so the definition of a battle drill, which I'll never forget, I learned it when I was a private, 20 some odd years ago, a collective action rapidly executed without applying a deliberate decision-making process. Can you have a collective action rapidly executed without applying a deliberate decision-making process without practicing and starting from the basics? You can't do it. So we gotta get competencies, build the competency, get some preparation under stress, and that's gonna make us confident, and we're gonna collectively take action and rapidly execute that shit. All right, so this is what we got. Uh, let me show you how to load. The way the civilian powers that be say that you need to be load and unload, you need to have eyes and ears on in case something goes off while we're doing this. I hope to God it doesn't. Yeah, I'm not gonna shoot, but eyes and ears, and everybody, your eye protection needs to be wrapped around the best you can. I see everybody looks good, looks good. Uh, we're pretty far away. If we get close to still up there shooting close, make sure if anybody changes glasses, whatever, you need to wrap around in case that, that frag from that still flies off the one side. His still over there frags off over here. If we were any closer, 
which I don't want to be any closer than 15 meters about with a rifle. And we're at 25 now. You got to really pay attention to that stuff. Frag will hit you. Shouldn't be anything that's arterial bleed. We got good steel out here. All right, so loading and unloading a weapon. First, the way I do it administratively, obviously if you're doing it under uh, pressure, you just do it fast and you get that in there and you got to practice that, right? But first, I always know the condition of my weapon, right? So I got three things to check when I check that weapon. First off, I make sure it was on safe. I lock my bolt to the rear and I'm looking at three things. My chamber, my magazine well, and my bolt face, right? Same thing with a pistol, same thing. I always check those three. And you know what? I could use common reasoning and say, well, there's no, I just took the magazine out. So why do I need to check the magazine well? Because seeing is believing. If I take my gun and give it to you, what should you do? Check it. What if I just checked it? You telling me I'm a liar? Nope. Just good practice. You don't know. You got to know. Your eyes and what you do tells you, right? So I check all three of those. I pull out my source of feed, also known as a magazine, or I pull out my microphone. Notice my weapon's pointed in a safe direction. And notice I'm not going down range, but I'm relatively safe. I can't keep my weapon down range all the time and get used to this if I expect to use my weapon in a real life situation, right? So I've got high carry. If I was low, I would be here, right? But I'm not pointed in any unsafe direction, right? I've got control of this weapon. It's just inherently that barrel's got to point somewhere when I'm operating in the world, right? So I got it out, got my source feed. I insert, I give it a tug to make sure it doesn't come back out because sometimes they don't see it, right? Might have a bad mag or something. And I want to watch the bullet go in because C is believing. Now, I don't do press checks when I do rifle because it's a little slower than pistol. Pistol goes a little faster than action does. The bullet goes in before I can really see it. And I do press checks sometimes to make sure it goes in. This goes so damn slow that I can see the bullet go in there. So I don't really practice that for your knowledge. All right, I close my dust cover because once you get grimy and you're really fighting somebody out in bullshit, especially a day like today, shit will get in that gun and affect the operation of that machine. It's just a machine, you gotta take care of it. It's like oil, right? Once I loaded and I seen that round go in, I gave it a forward assist. Some rifles, if they're real cool, they might not have a forward assist, mine does. I just make sure that thing's seated because I didn't slam the belt home. I kind of let it go forward and it wasn't a lot of pressure, right? So that's what that there, that's there for. All right, now I'm loaded. If I'm unloaded, uh, let me back up too. If I was carrying a pistol like some of you guys, I would load my secondary first. There's a rule for that for a reason. People's forgotten that shit. So the one that's not in your hand, make sure that's up, whatever. Mine's on me, it's loaded, right? As I'm holding on to this thing, I'm also paying attention to where my safe is. I don't care how you sling it, whatever. I just ask that part of that rule of knowing the condition of your weapon at all times. As soon as I did something, like I came over here, I put a tourniquet on you, and now I'm back up. I come back and I put my thumb automatically goes to that safety selector, right? Just immediately, I just feel it. I don't have to hold it in a cool guy stance all the time. I just, I know that shit can knock that on fire. So I just come back, I check it, all right? And I can hold it here. Sometimes I turn it out like this, that way I know nothing can affect that. And let it sit there, right? All right, it's on safe. Makes sense? Unloading. But if you have to unload, you have to put your gun down, you gotta go take a shit or whatever, you're gonna drop that source of feed, drop that magazine, right? Put it wherever you want it. And what I do, I practice keeping things up in my workspace if you, if you hadn't already noticed, right? Because I don't want to get in the practice of doing this. It's not a lot of awareness, so I'm here. I hold my bolt catch, I release, I walk, look for the round to exit, right? Because that's good confirmation. But that's not enough for me, because I got to know. So I check those three points again. One, two, three. If it was night, or if it was real dark or black because I've been shooting a lot, I get a flashlight and I get my finger up in there. Right, and I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen where people didn't know something was in there because it was black and it wasn't shiny. So I check it, let it go forward, and I don't do this every time I unload, but at the end of the day, when I'm unloading, putting my rifle away, I get a good well-aimed shot down range, press my trigger, and I might leave that forward. Depends on how you want to carry your rifle, right? I watched where it went. Another good, uh, there it is. Another good thing I was taught too that I'm not in a good habit of, obviously, is once your bullet goes down, just step on it right quick while you finish up whatever you're doing. So you step on it and it's right under your foot, right? That's a good habit to have, especially out here with this grass. Usually you're, if you're not worried about it, but you can lose shit in this grass. Make sense, everybody? 
Y'all step up to the line, everybody on line at one time. Lock your gun to the rear, up in your workspace. Go ahead and do your three point safety check. Just make sure you know what the is going on. It's good habit right there, right? Good habit. Put your mag in, put your mag in. Don't let it go forward till you rotate that gun and see that it goes in. That bullet goes into the chamber like it's supposed to. All right, once you got it inserted and you're looking, see that bullet go forward, let it go. Forward assist, make sure it's seated. Mount that gun up in front of you, make sure your sights are good to go. Everybody good? Everybody loaded? Make sure it stays on safe, make sure you know the status of your weapon the rest of the day. All right, so uh, I've already broken you up into groups. One of you guys will be fire in order one. So one of y'all stay on the line behind your particular flag. Your buddy, just let your weapon hang. Let your weapon hang and get behind them. So the guys on the flag right now, fire in order one. Guys behind them, fire in order two. And you're still lined up with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Disregard the orange guy over there on the left, right? Unless you just want to make it harder on yourself. I can put you on that little one. I'm going to walk you through, putting it on downrange, by the way. Downrange, y'all repeat the command. Uh, make sure you don't shoot me. I don't care if your gun, your hands on your gun, as long as you're not finger doing all kinds of stuff while I'm downrange because I don't know you that good, right? I'm going to have you be behind the flag, the first firing order, right? I'm going to have you identify, and I might put you in a, looking one way or the other, identify the threat, which is always going to be down here, <laughs> right? You're going to identify the threat. I'm going to tell you to move. You're going to move up on line mounting the gun and going to, to fire. So a little trick that I see a lot of guys, even experienced guys, they don't really do. They stay here, they go here before they worry about the selector. With a rifle, my hand, I don't give a f my hand is not on the trigger obviously, but I'm constantly on top of that fire, uh, that semi and safe selector. That's where my speed is, right? Back and forth. So that's where I stay. I'm ready, I'm mounted, and y'all can see I come up, my hand's wide open, but my thumb is on that selector. Can y'all see that? That's what goes fast. Boom, then I can come to the trigger. All right, so we're gonna rehearse that a little bit. I'm gonna walk you through it, and you're gonna fire one shot on the steel that belongs to you. Can you give me the commands? Identify, move, and fire. Identify. Move. Fire. Good, I missed the first one. <laughs> hey, but that's what I want you to do. If you miss, clean it up right after. I realize I missed and I hit it. Now I feel better. Make sense? You gotta do it. All right, questions on that? Just one shot, unless you miss. Identify. Move. Fire. All right, stay where you are. This is the next step, and you're going to do this every time you engage. You're going to go safe, dust cover. Bear with me. I know that you feel like an idiot doing that. Safe, dust cover. Look left and right, behind, and then move offline and let it hang. Identify. Move. Fire. Safety, dust cover, left, right, behind, move. Yeah, fire in order two, you're watching. You're watching, if they miss, you let them know. They need to know where they're hitting. Identify, move, fire. <laughs> Safety, dust cover, left, right, behind, move. Identify, move, fire. Ready, identify, move, fire. Everybody on the count of three, you're going to say safety, dust cover, left, right, behind, move. One, two, three. Safety, safety dust, dust cover, cover, left, right, right, right behind, move. Left, right, behind, move, move. This is important. I know it feels elementary to you, but when you're shooting, and there's a lot of people shooting near you, and you're maneuvering, you need to see everything around you. Your head needs to be on a swivel. You have to do it. You have to, or you will f One more time, one more time. 
This time, facing back towards the cabin. Watch your muzzles. Don't go to your buddy's legs or anything. You gotta exaggerate whatever movement you're in and don't bring that muzzle up until it's in a, in a safe direction. All right, facing there. All right, identify. Don't turn all the way around, just look over the shoulder. Move. Fire. All right, relax. Safety, dust cover, left, right, behind. Move and let them hang. Fire in order two up online. <coughs> Identify. Move. Fire. <laughs> Safety, dust cover, left, right, behind. Move. Identify. Move. Fire. <laughs> Say it and do it. Identify. Move. Fire. All right. One thing I'm going to add to these, you guys, and we're going to add this into it. So I know I'm giving you a lot. Well, since simple, but it's kind of a lot. You're listening to me say a bunch of shit, right? Can I use you real quick, Aaron? Yep. Stand by that flag. So if I'm three meters behind him and I go, you think this is a good spot? Nope. Maybe I know that I'm here. He doesn't. He might not know, right? And I don't want him to f my shot either. Even if I'm safe enough where I'm not going to shoot him, I don't want him hitting my barrel. So I like to give him an indicator of where the f I am too. So that means, can you see me, Aaron? If I was here, you'd notice, wouldn't you? Yep. All right, I don't want him noticing when he feels, feels muzzle blast against the side of his face. I want him knowing I'm here. What? All right? And th keep in mind what my background is. CQB was my main focus when I was in SF. And you shoot real close to everybody, but I, don't ne I never shoot when I'm not online or unsafe. We stay a barrel length off of them, right? We call shot that makes everybody freeze if I'm doing something real risky across a room, right? All those uh, risk mitigation factors were built in, those safety measures. Even the best of the best that do it every day, you got to have those, you got to have them. You got to be programmed to react accordingly so that my bandwidth is free to deal with the problems in front of me and not thinking about all the things that might make me unsafe and all the competencies and fundamentals, they gotta be built in. It's gotta be subconscious. My mind's gotta be free for the other problems. That stuff's just gotta happen. Follow me? So this is your buddy. Make sure he sees my barrel past him. That's him, my barrel's past him. Follow me? Make sense? All right. Fire in order two still. Identify. Move. Threat. All right, everybody face towards me. Same thing. Identify. Move. Threat. Identify. Over the shoulder. Move. Threat. Relax. Let them hang. So, for the rest of this time, I'm not focusing on reloads, right? As you see the need to reload, reload. If you have a pistol on you and you're already trained and it's loaded or whatever you want to do, you can transition if you go dry. That's fine, as long as you're doing it safely. All right, this is kind of an advanced station, like I told you, expected to know a few things. I don't care how slow or fast it is, as long as it's safe. All right, so if you know that you've shot, I don't know, 15 out of your 30 rounds and you got a full mag and you don't want to go dry, you can just conduct a tactical reload, right? Just put that in. Make sure, remember, you'll figure it out real quick if you don't know. Some of these magazines, they won't, if they're full, they won't get seated on a, 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 a bolt forward uh -huh. rifle. You'll figure it out though, right? And you can do it however you want. I'm not teaching technique right now, all right? I do it certain ways, but just make sure you're gassed up and you uh, take care of your gun appropriately, all right? Knowing the condition of your gun, right? Makes sense? All right, so that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Let's get fire in order one back up. <laughs> And I'm not giving you the commands. I'm gonna tell you threat and you move to the line and engage them one time. One. Ready, threat. Check everybody, check your buddies. 
That's what you're looking for. All right, same thing. Come on up, stay up on line. All right, facing uh, that direction. Ready, threat. Ready, threat. Facing the cabin. Ready, threat. There we go. See, if you're looking around, did anybody, hey, all you guys, go back up here real quick. George was here, right? He's figuring out what he's got to do. He's getting his rounds on his target. Took a little longer than y'all. No big deal. I'm not pointing you out for that reason. But I wonder, when you guys safe, dust cover, look left and right, did y'all notice there was a guy still up here? Did anybody, don't fucking lie. Did y'all notice? Don't just go through the process. Look for something. Look for what these guys are doing because that's what we're working towards, not just looking cool on the range, man. I'm looking over here and I'm seeing, is this guy doing, what is he doing? Yes, sir. I was under the impression we should move once we cleared dust cover. Yeah, yeah, you can. I just wanted to see if y'all noticed him. He was still shooting. He was still shooting. I'm just wanting you to be aware. Not, we're not just doing it to, to, to finger drill it. You know what I mean? Look around, see what's going on because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking, because if I get up ready to move and I say, cover me while I move, he said, I got you covered. And I say, you, you got me covered. And I'm like, all right, I'm going. And I see him there, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll go behind him, I guess, right? <laughs> Things like that. That's what we're looking for, awareness, right? It's easy to see the dot and shoot something once you get that competency, but that's not the whole firefight, not at all. All right, hey, one more for you guys, this one. Five rounds. Five. You're putting five on that guy. Five on him. Because if I'm in a firefight, I promise you you're not shooting one. I promise you. I all right, so... From the position that you're in right now, fire in order one. On the command of ready, you're ready and identifying and whatever you need to do. Mounting that gun however you want to mount it, whatever is feasible for the position you're in. And then the command of threat, you're moving forward and firing five rounds. And then safety, dust cover, you're checking around, you're seeing what the fuck is going on, and then you're moving. Make sense? Everybody understand? Ready, threat. There we go. Good reload. Nice. Ready, threat. Facing to your left. Ready, threat. All right, facing the cabin. If you're going high carry, mind that muzzle. I understand it, I'm cool with it, just mind it. Ready, threat. Ready, threat. Couple things to keep in mind. When you're around barriers, it can determine the way that you kneel if you got time to think about it. If I'm so close, now, if we're talking tactics, bad guys are really right here. This is called a, a near ambush area. I'm in hand, hand grenade range, meaning if they snuck up on me and started shooting right now, I'd be, I'd be in deep shit. I just need to turn and start firing like a Hopefully I survive it, right? A far ambush, meaning that I have a little time to react. Like if I'm up on top of the hill near that cabin and I get a pop shot down from this wood line, I can get down behind the f cabin, you know, get a good position, start looking, identifying. I got a little more time to figure shit out, right? I don't necessarily need to run into the gunfire. See the difference? Yeah. So don't take that into context right now for this situation. We're just at this distance because it's kind of far for rifle, it's safe, and gives you a little bit of a challenge for the other things that we're working on. That's it. Um, kneeling. If you're kneeling, that's, that's a determination you make based off of the effective fire you're receiving. Make sense? Like if I know I can, if I kneel and feel safe doing that and I'm behind something, I'll do it. If I'm behind cover, 
I want to kneel in a certain fashion to where I can keep myself from falling out from behind the cover, right? And I can have a good stable platform, right? Without insulting anybody's intelligence, let's just talk through it a little bit, just some considerations. So if I'm kneeling, I've decided that the situation doesn't require me to be in the prone, but it doesn't want me to be standing anyway. And me, I've got kind of an internal uh, instinct that tells me to kneel anything. Anytime I have like, I think it was programmed in me in the infantry, when you got to reload, you go, you kneel. It was always in our mind. Like you just kneel, get the out of the way. That way you're not in somebody else's way. There's a visual indicator from your, to your buddies that, hey, something's going on with him over there. So I need to either pick up his spot or I realize that I need to pick up my fire because I got a gun out of the fight because he kneeled unexpectedly, right? So there's all kinds of context for kneeling. We're, we're thinking of it in just the, the context of staying small and giving yourself a better platform. That's what we're talking about. All right, so I can come down like this and sit back on my heels like I am right now, right? I can be up, maybe with the cover or something I'm behind, I have to be a little bit taller, right? Um, personally, I like this position. If I had to pick one out of all of them, that just to do as default, this would be my position because I have a good stable platform up here. So I can sit this right there, right? And, that, and I can just rest it. Pull this in just a little bit, and I've got a stable platform, even if I'm breathing hard. I can just pull in a little bit, and it's sitting. And that's bone to bone, right? I'm not balancing it with my muscle, I'm not using fatigue, potentially fatigued muscle, right? And working through that. I'm just bone to bone, foot to ground, knee to foot, elbow to knee, all the way up to my wrist. It's just sitting on here. And I could even do like this if I wanted to, you know, some kind of special Carlos Hathcock <laughs> shit. Whatever I wanted, man, because I can sit here for a while. The other side, which if I was behind cover, say I got cover here, I'm shooting around behind it, I like to put this leg up. So I can also give myself some stability with this elbow sitting on here, but this is really not what affects my shooting anyway, unless I'm jerking the hell out of that trigger, right? This is the one that's got to bounce the, the length of the gun out in front of me, follow me? So it is some stability here, and I got bone on bone contact, but this is the hand doing all the work, really, you know? But the advantage of doing it this way is that I can post my foot here behind the cover, not go past it, and I got like a kickstand that I can kind of lean out. I can, I can get here, and I got a little bit of movement, and uh, I'm, I'm flexible in that position. And I'm not worried about somebody knocking me over if my buddy's trying to get in the fight with me. I got that kickstand. He tries to push me, I just flex with him, right? Just make sure my foot slides back behind that cover. So that's the two methodologies or, or the two thoughts of process concerning kneeling as far as I'm concerned, right? Now, both knees, you can do it, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's up to you. And usually I don't go straight into this position a lot of times, but I have found myself in this position because this got tiresome. Or I'm sitting on my damn feet and I'm my muscles are like this, <laughs> right? So I'm like, this is more comfortable, right? And I can sit up. So it's not usually my go-to, but it is a transition position on the knees that gets me a little more comfortability and I can last in that position longer. Or even switch, you know what I mean? Both down, back up. Make sense? So we'll mess with them. I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out how you want to do it. I suggest trying both, right? Quickly. Uh, me, I always default to this one, like I said. Boom. Because it's already rested here. That's where I'm at. That's my fighting stance. That's how I shoot, and I'm straight down, all right? If you're a wrestler, it's the opposite of wrestling because your front knee goes down in wrestling, right? <laughs> so that being said, I'm gonna do basically the same thing. I'm gonna get you ready. But first, before I do that, I want y'all, all of you at the same time, you can come up, practice getting into that knee position real quick. Do both sides, do both knees. You got it, no problem, Steve. Steve's old as hell and somebody took his knees away. I'm old enough to be your dad. <laughs> I need a dad. <laughs> All right, so check it out on the knees. Steve, you'll still run through these, you just do them standing. Cool? All right, so uh, just try it out. Go ahead, on you. No shooting, just going into the position. That's a nice waterproof bag you got there for that camera. Uh -uh. Are you? And he's got a diamond earring in. If I'm 71 and I got a diamond earring, I'll be accomplished in life.
<laughs> consider myself successful. <laughs> so the tricky part of this is easy getting down in the knees, but when I start going in as a team and I have to lay down fire immediately, I got to get there fast. So pop up real quick and I want you to get there fast and don't hurt yourself. Make sure you can get down because I have to get down, but almost simu down range, almost simultaneously, I want to get fire on the target. What it looked like in real life is you shoot and I don't know where the f those bullets went. That's the, that's the God honest truth. Just shoot. shoot. And I don't know where the bullets went because I'm getting rounds down range. So practice, we're not going to go, I'm not going to tell you, hey, don't worry about accuracy. I'm going to tell you, try to hit that thing, right? But I want you to be as close to simultaneous as I'm getting down and I'm firing at the same damn time as I can, right? There's not a lot of time to be spared there. It needs to be almost simultaneous. So push your, the envelope. If you miss, so be it. You gotta miss a little bit in order to progress. Because if you're hitting all the time, that means you're going too slow for your skill level. Push yourself a little bit further. That's why I got a backstop out here. I don't want you just throwing rounds for the of it, for the sake of speed, but try to bring them together. All right, go a little bit faster, try to be fast. If somebody shoots at you and you got a gun in your hand and you know that I'm free to shoot anywhere down that way, you will shoot rounds down that way and they will not be accurate all the time, I guarantee it. All right, identify your target. Ready, set. Ready, set. Make sure you look around you, you see what's going on, then you come up and back. All right, face it to your left, face it to your left. Ready, set, move, move. Ready, set, get on line, get on line. <coughs> Ready, set. Ready, set. Identify, uh, ready, threat. Ready, threat. I feel that. Feel pretty good? Everybody need to jam mags? Yeah. All right, I got 1048. Let's take 10. If you're a smoker or something, you got to piss, whatever, take 10, jam mags, smoke it. I don't care if you smoke up there, anywhere, right? As long as you, you ain't got no dynamite on you or something like that, right? <laughs>
All right. So we, we did standing. We got the idea of getting online, right? It's very important. We got the idea or the concept of not coming up or getting offline or, or dropping your awareness from what's around you before you move, right? Taking that focal point of being what's in my sights and then looking at everything else. That is the real context to doing that stuff on the flat range. So people mess it up all the time because they see one uh, abbreviated version of some things that people did for particular reasons and they're like, that's the way to do it. Who knows why, you just do it. It's for a few things, right? So you gotta have it in the right context. I hate, I absolutely hate it when I see people doing that. I'm like, what the f are you looking at, right? And it's not that it's necessarily bad, it's just what are you trying to get to? What is your end state that you're trying to train to while you're doing that stuff, right? You need to know the why. So I'm not just looking around, and even out on the regular ranges, especially packed ranges, where you got nut to butt, they say, right? And everybody's getting bra everybody's brass on you. Like, I'm, my head is on a swivel then. I'm looking all around, because I don't know these guys. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how he's manipulating his gun and freaking bringing it across my head. Like, whoa, 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 right? So that's my reason for looking around. But through that, I also, before that ever happened, I had the, the blessing of being in the military where they beat it into our heads that you don't move. And I was scared to really, because you got your buddy back there that, you know, dumbass that don't wash on the weekends. They don't even know how to do hygiene and he's supposed to be shooting a live gun behind you. And you're supposed to be doing some kind of uh, strategic tactical drill. And I, you know, I'm looking. Yeah, I hear rounds, and you can hear them zooming by you if they're in some proximity of you. You looking around? You know, I'm not moving until that guy figures out what the hell he's doing with his gun over there. I might be looking back there to see if he's putting his, putting it on safe. I don't know, right? So it's a good habit to have. You got something to add to that, Aaron? Yeah. Just that, that being said, man, safety is all of our responsibility. So two things: one, just like he said, if if you see an unsafe situation, don't move into it. And the other thing is, is call it out and and. You know, and if there's something you're unsure of, you know, ask before you do it if you're uncomfortable with it, you know. Definitely. It's everyone's job. Everybody, what do they say in the Army? Everybody's a safety officer. And I definitely, like, I might not worry about you being safe so much as long as it don't affect me. But I definitely need to be aware for my own uh, life-saving <laughs> uh, survival techniques, right? So I need to make sure these guys are doing something safe, too. Standing prone. We know we're reacting in contact, we're getting online, we're being aware before we move or, or make a decision to do anything drastic when we know there's other people around us or other things going on around us. So we need to get in the prone now, right? I know it's gonna suck, it's kinda wet, but at least it's not raining as bad as it was yesterday when we first got here, so that's the silver lining. The ways to get in the prone. I don't want you belly flopping. It shouldn't be so fast. Now, when you're young, dumb, and we were just saying this, belly flopping, he was mentioning it, like you find any way to get in the prone, you're just so super motivated and dynamic you just uh, you're diving and you pay for it I, like i said i mentioned i lost a tooth i've had cake mud on shit i've broken things right uh my old sergeant major used to say you give a private an infantry private you know the lowest ranking two ball, steel ball bearings and tell him to cross the road he'll get across there and lost one of them and broke the other and if you know what a steel ball bearing is it's like that's how it's right so when it comes to this shit and being tough-minded we're, we get kind of aggressive in it and you will break your shit. So we got to have kind of a, a deliberate action. Vague idea equals vague action is what I've been told. And I found that it's true, right? So let's have a deliberate way of approaching it. And then maybe it won't work out that way, but at least I have something in the, the semblance of a plan so I don't hurt myself or break my shit, right? So it's not that big a deal. It's not rocket science, but there is a certain way to it. And Aaron's had six knee surgeries and that didn't come from him doing the smartest things. It's probably just him being too tough for his own good. All right. I've had one knee surgery and back pain. And some of you guys can probably attest to some of the stupid shit you've done in the name of being good at whatever you was trying to do at that point in time. Right. So glory, glory I guess, <laughs> or just looking better than the guy beside you, which is really kind of what it turns out to be sometimes. But so the way I like to do it for getting yeah, for the chicks, Getting into the prone, I just modify what I do for kneeling. So I already told you I kind of got a default mode when it's time to kneel. 
<laughs> I'm here and I kind of stay in my fight. I mean, I can't decide what foot's for, but I know where's my best fighting stance is. So I try to be there as much as I can, right? So I'm moving, I'm moving, and I just kneel, right? And I'm already here. So why would I change that, right? All I got to do is move one leg out of the way and give myself another kickstand. The problem here is it's different for different people and different gun setups. Like you got to have the ability with the, the sling slack, right? So it can't be tight to your body and you don't want to wait to react to contact to loosen up your sling, right? You're not here like, well, I'm about to get down in a minute, right? So it needs to be loose enough so it can accommodate you in all the different positions that you might find yourself in. But once I get here, I got to kind of one hand this thing. It's up to you how you do it. I prefer to use my support hand as my kickstand, right? So it requires me to kind of tuck this thing and let all that, or at least hold it out here, or use my sling even. Look how I'm using my sling. See how I'm not holding all the weight? I've pushed it forward, and the sling against my body is kind of holding that weight up here. Follow me? Just like this. See how my sling's working? Same thing here, same concept. All right, or you can just kind of muscle it, right? Here, it's a little bit harder, right? Or you can tuck it in and then come down. But I've got this kickstand, and I'm going to soften my impact. All right, if I, what can happen if I just fall forward like this and let my gun absorb the impact, right? Think about this. If you're in the context of you and your buddies out in the woods firefighting somebody, is there any helicopter that's going to drop you off extra magazines? Yeah. I don't know. If you do, that's a good plan. I'm proud of you. I don't have that plan, and I don't think it's feasible for me, right? So what magazines I have, I got to keep them. I got to have a way to feed bullets into this gun. If I break all my magazines, I might have a bunch of bullets, but it'll be a lot slower firing. One, boom, right? Two, right? You can do it, but you better get good at it. Um, so I'm here. I came down, and it's up to you if you want to go to both knees or one. I come down to my already known position, so I'm not changing a lot of shit. And I'm releasing this support hand, tucking this, or extending it, or muscling it, and I'm placing it down and coming down into the prone, right? And I'm here, and you'll notice because you're on the hill right now, you're gonna have to raise your gun up a little bit. You're not gonna be able to hug the ground because you'll be looking downhill. So you might have to come up and support yourself. That's fine. Whatever you gotta do, it's not gonna be perfect. Make sense? Now, the other option here is come down to your position, whatever knee it is, and then put the, the, uh, your primary hand down. It gives you a little more control over the gun, right? I don't like it so much, right? Because then I lose track of the safety, for one. And uh, it's just not the same for me, right? If I go here and this hand gets shit all over it, that's my shooting hand, right? I don't want to damage this hand. I don't want shit all on that hand. And it's, kind of sim I guess, seemingly small things, but anything I do, I try to do it with this hand anyway, right? So I still got this hand ready to go. Primary hand versus support hand, let it support, okay? Versus going here. And then there's more things that I gotta adjust now, right? I gotta come back here, I gotta get my hand out here if it was somewhere different, because usually where my hand goes when I'm shooting is not where it goes when I'm just holding the gun with that hand, right? I'll be in the center. So now I gotta re-extend that hand, and now I'll come back in. Follow me? Getting back up, you see what I just did? Just went in reverse, basically, right? Use that same hand, kickstand, push myself up, right? Sometimes, if you can't push yourself up, you're heavy, then I lift my ass and I bring my knees in. Make sense? So, that's an option. If you can't push yourself up, I suggest trying both of them, coming back up. Just bring your knees up under you. All right? And I come to this position, and then I go to my known and liked position, and then I can just stand up. I don't stand up straight off my ass, obviously, because it's a little hard. I extend my hips a little bit, spread my white my base out, and then I come up, it's just like a lunge. Make sense? Sorry, to inter I know some of that stuff seems simple, but I see people get hurt because they're not doing the right way. And then what I could do is I have you do it without showing you some way that's feasible to do. And then you spend 30 rounds figuring out how to get down on the ground and we're wasting that time. Follow me? So that's why we're showing you that. Make sense? For you guys, if you're not comfortable, I know you don't need to get down, just stay standing and do what you gotta do. If you're not comfortable with it, you're getting the practice of it, don't try to rush it. I'm a jujitsu guy, wrestling guy, and there's a, and the whole premise of those martial arts, well, not wrestling so much, but jujitsu is leverage use, right? It's not just strength, right? So instead of 
trying to be stronger than Aaron and lift him, right? I'm going to use my base, give me some support, and use that to my advantage versus just trying to out-athletic or out-strength somebody, right? Same thing here. When you get older, and you'll see why it's important. I don't just get up any old way. I was telling him yesterday, he was talking about how our knees were and I was like, I used to jump off of, with body armor and all that shit, and they had an LMTV truck, and the back of the LMTV truck's about this high. It's a big ass truck, right? And it's a troop carrying truck. You get in the back of it, and there's a ladder, they gotta pull down the tailgate, put a ladder on it, and you climb down the ladder, and you know, in the pursuit of glory and awesomeness, glory. we jump out of the truck with all this shit on, an extra 45 to 60 something pounds. I'm like, why did I do that to my knee? That's probably why my knee is you know he's like i ain't wasting no time no matters i'm jumping five feet down to the ground with all this shit on me it's not good man so let's do it smarter right so here instead of like springing up and doing that shit right just extend your leg and push forward right just use a smart way to do it and you're gonna be doing a lot of reps so better to preserve your muscle make sense Come on up online. We're not shooting right here. We're just practicing the movement, right? Don't worry about, just don't point at me. That's all you got to do. And so come down to your natural kneeling position. Natural kneeling position. Now, whatever hand that you prefer, give yourself a kickstand on the ground as you're placing both knees, your other knee, your up knee down. So as I'm leaning forward, I'm also going down to both knees. And come all the way down in the prone. And uh, this serves another purpose as well. Make sure at this angle on this hill that y'all can get a good prone shot from here. Can everybody see their targets? Yeah. All right, so in reverse, give yourself that kickstand. Push back up onto them knees. It helps if you bring that one knee up under you so you ain't got to push yourself all the way back. So if you try to do this fast, can you see where some of these pitfalls will be or where you might knock your tooth out? <laughs> be careful. Don't slam your rifle on the ground. Be quick. But... Use sense. Follow me? Because we're going to get a little faster here, right? I want you to be fast. It's going to be important. Ready? Threat! Prone. Five shots. Check your area. Come up on your own. Ready? Threat! Ready, set. Ready, set. Be quick about it right here. You gotta get rounds on. You gotta get rounds on. Get on the line fast. Put three on that son of a bitch quick. All right? Transition fast. What are y'all noticing? I see some of y'all, y'all getting into the prone, and I told you to do it safely, but you gotta get rounds down quick. So I gotta get it up there. And maybe it ain't in the exact same spot that I put it in when I zero my rifle. It's gotta get in there in some spot, and you just see that red dot and put them on them. Right? It might hurt. <laughs> you might yank that thing in. Whatever. It ain't got to be perfect. It's just here. It's like if you're going high carry and coming in, boom. That's not perfect where I zero, but I'm damn sure going to hit it. Follow me? Get a little bit faster. Knee, from knees, three, prone, three. Y'all good? Ready? Fret! Ready, Fret. Fret. How y'all feel with that one? 
still kind of easing down. So work out the kinks as far as you're getting down, right? It needs to be fast. So a demonstration of fast, if I'm here and I come down, that's how fast I want to be to get down, right? There's some impact there, but I'm, I'm minimizing it, right? But I, I don't want to get hit. So I don't want to come down the knees and, right? Makes sense? So I'm coming down, boom. And I need to get on there. Notice one thing that I was just telling y'all. Look where my butt stock is. Yep. That's not where I place my butt stock. Nope. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to shoot. My hand is not in the perfect spot. I need to get rounds on them. Eyes and ears, <laughs> right? So I'm here, I can shoot from that position. I'm lining it up and I'm low as I can and I'm shooting. It's acceptable, it's an acceptable position. Make sense? Yeah. So we're gonna go to the kneeling three, prone three. Kneeling three, prone three. So straight to your kneeling. So it's kind of building in that, come to your comfortable kneeling position and then, all right, I need to get lower cause they're getting close and then I'm going to the prone. So three from, from uh, kneeling, three from prone. Ready. Yeah, you just gotta get an acceptable platform there. But I gotta get bullets down there, right? Got to. Yeah. Or he's maneuvering on you and he's achieving fire superiority. Anybody ever heard that term? I know military guys, fire superiority. Mm -hmm. Fire superiority gives you the ability to call the shots. Gives you opportunity. If I have fire superiority over you, that means I'm dictating what you do, right? I'm dictating the pace. Right? Anybody boxing fans or anything like that? Yeah. Absolutely. The guys that usually lose boxing matches are the pace is being dictated to them. Right? I make you keep up with my pace. You get more tired because you're reactionary to everything I'm doing and I'm actively pursuing you, making you react, making you react. And you're doing defense. And it's hard to be offensive when you're playing defense all the time, right? We got offense is the best defense. We have to be fire superiority. That's why it's got to be fast. We got to put shots on them. We got to dictate the pace. If I'm missing right now, well, when I dictate the pace, I can make myself more accurate. I start coming at you swinging, boom, 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 and you're just covering up. Now I can start picking, well, now I can hit him in the body, or now I can kick him in the leg, or now I can take him down because he's shelling up playing defense, right? That's what we got to do, fire superiority. We dictate the pace. I do not lose. I'm not saying that I don't. I'm saying that's your mindset, right? We don't lose. I put fire on you, and I win and you're going to get all this magazine until I'm dictating what the fuck you do because you're not going to tell me that I have to sit in place and sit here and wait for you to come kill me right we have to dictate the pace make sense totally. all right one more of those one more of those ready threat We're gonna start progressing a little bit. This is easy shit. You kind of got the idea of the positions that we need to be in and how to get in them, how to get out of them, right? We gotta speed it up a little bit. And it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be ugly. You gotta start working with your buddy a little bit. Um, you start. You gotta start moving. Now, in addition to being able to get down and react fast, I gotta be able to maneuver, all right? So if I don't have cover, if I was out in the open like this field such as we are in right now, my only cover is what, like I said? Basically, my shots or my buddy's shots that's covering me as I'm moving. Thank you. That's my cover. I don't want to spend a lot of time out in the open without me shooting Why I'm in a field right here, right? I don't want to be up too long. I don't want to be a big target for too long. So in the military, three basically movement positions that they teach you, the low crawl, high crawl, and three to five second rush, they call it, right? We're not getting into low crawl, high crawl. I think it kind of, it kind of happens. I may get into it. We'll see how it shakes out tomorrow give you a reason. The biggest thing I can say about those is what people like to do when they start crawling is do this with their gun. Doesn't work good when your buddy's beside you, right? So I got to crawl. I got to keep that gun down range. I might have to get my hand up under it, 
right? To keep it off the ground while I'm crawling to a certain position. Not really gonna get into it. It'll kind of take care of itself. And if your buddy's paying attention like you should, you're aiming at him, he's gonna hit you with a rock or something. Inside, inside your head for I can aim at him like I'm crawling like this my gun is just like looking at him right so be careful with that so we're going to get into three to five second rush though because it's going to be applicable to what you're going to be doing the last day uh, specifically and he said it right there what we used to say they say you up, you're up for three to five seconds that takes that's about how long it takes a guy to f he's looking he's hunting he sees you he gets settled down enough and applies the fundamentals presses that trigger in three to five seconds right Popping up out of nowhere, I'm over here, I find you, I'm looking, I'm settling my, settling my rifle down, getting my sight picture and pressing that trigger, three to five seconds. So what you say in your head is, I'm up, they see me, I'm down. I'm up, they see me, I'm down, right? So that's what we would say in our head, all right? Some of that, those talking points that keeps us on track. Cause I'm not counting, I'm not like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, right? I'm up, they see me, I'm down, right? At the same time, your buddy's covering you and you're getting down quick. Right? So if you took back to getting down in position pretty quickly, so you can return fire and dictate the pace, right? Also, if I'm already got lined up on you because you got up and ran and you're saying, I'm up, they see me, I'm down, but you're down is, <laughs> you're still not down really, right? You're still, he's just like dropping his point of aim a little bit and just following you down. And, and if he's smart, he's putting about five or six. And so one of them hits you hopefully, right? One shot, one kill doesn't count in these battle drills against another fighting opponent. You give them a lot of bullets. We give them a lot of bullets, right? Tomorrow, we'll be talking about, yeah, we want to dictate the pace. Yeah, we want to give them a lot of bullets and be violent, right? Violence of action wins a lot of encounters. But it's not paintball either, right? I don't have a big jug of balls that I can get those electric triggers and just be like, brrrr. Has anybody played paintball or watched it? Okay. <laughs> so paintball, you get away with, it's like, there's not a lot of thought process involved because I know I got a ton of ammo. So as long as I keep ammo at you and brrr, one of them will hit you and I can move, just how, brrr, you're not shooting at me because I'm shooting at you and I'm being so offensive, right? We can't do that in the regular army because for one, you can only carry so much ammo. Two, you can carry a whole lot more, but you're gonna hate life with all the weight that you'll be carrying, right? So you have to, you have to have rates of fire and be smart about it. And that's another part of the team aspect. Like I don't need to win the war with a cyclic rate of fire, meaning basically shooting as fast as I can, or even a, a rapid rate of fire, which is about one second. Bang, one second, bang, 1,000, bang, 1,000, bang, 1,000. If I keep that up for a long time, I got about 30 seconds for that mag change, right? As long as it took you all to put a tourniquet on. And that's one mag, and if you got seven more, like a basic load, which I didn't carry seven more all the time, depending on what I was doing, like then you got, how many minutes is that? Four minutes? You got four minutes of shooting. So you got to dictate that fire, so you got to be strategic about how you place that fire right um and you got to work together as a team while you're doing so all right i pick up my fire if i need to but i'm also listening to the response i'm getting from the bad guys if i start owning them i hit them i put them down then i can stop shooting potentially based off of what we're getting back the feedback we're getting all right so all that stuff's coming tomorrow and you're going to see it in in 3d with <laughs> force on force um so the up i'm see me they see me i'm down a three to five second rush. So it's gonna put you through the motions a little bit of getting down, getting back up, getting to another position and then engaging again, right? It's gonna be kind of tough. Go as only as fast as you can. And what we're gonna do is, you're gonna be moving online, but the way I've got you spread out right here, right? It's not real risk of you getting in each other's line because I'm gonna give you a flag to go to and a flag to come from, right? So you're running from one flag to the next. And myself and Aaron will be right on you and following behind you. All right, to make sure because some of y'all is gonna get up and have a faster I'm up, they see me I'm down than the other guys. So you're gonna kinda be staggered. You're not gonna be in a perfect line, but that's just how it goes. As long as we got separation this way, right? We got muzzle awareness, figure trigger, or trigger, figure trigger, <laughs> trigger finger discipline, right? Uh, and we're being aware, we'll be fine. Ready, threat. Move! 
thing, same exact thing. Y'all clear on it, second firing order? All right, kneel in one shot, and when I say move, up, prone, one shot. Ready, threat. Move. Ready, fret. Move. Watch your buddies. Hey, stop right there, stop. Look at where you are. What's that flag symbolize? Your buddy. Your buddy that you gotta be on line with. All right, so make sure you're on line with him. All right, get past him, get past him. Come on back. Ready, set. Move. From the kneeling, from the kneeling. Second shot from the kneeling, right? Oh, you guys kneeling. aren't paying attention to details. <laughs> Pretty easy, huh? Relatively, yes. Yeah. Pretty easy. Going downhill, really. Yeah. Oh, flipper. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, man. <laughs> I, get the next I tried to get them to flatten this shit out. They didn't do it. So we're going to add something here. That's pretty easy, man. I'm not just, this is not a, a PT session. I'm not just trying to smoke you for the f but it's just, that's inherent with the task, right? It's inherent with the task. So what I'm gonna do is do two people at a time, two people at a time, two buddy teams. And you're gonna kind of watch. We're gonna talk you through it. I have everybody go through it once, kind of walking uh, and me giving you the steps like we did before. And then I'll have you do a little bit faster. But the whole time, Aaron and I will be with, with the teams. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. Let's do it slow, Aaron. Think we can do it? Ready? Fret. I can't see shit. Cover me while I move! I'm up. They see me. I'm down. Set! I'm reloading! But I don't have any bullets! <laughs> Let's go! After you say cover me, I got you covered, you move, you come down, do you always say set then at that point? I like to be redundant. So I won't say that I said that every time I fire, and I don't say it now, but the more I, it's more of me getting those, uh, those processes in my head so I know that that needs to happen. So what I'm telling myself is through those words, is I need to, he needs to acknowledge that I'm moving. He needs to acknowledge that I got where I'm going. And the way we use those words and those commands to each other, not because that's how you do it all the time and it always works, is because that uh, builds in that, that understanding. Follow me? Mm -hmm. also so come here once. Say what? You see that's, you know, like you said, double checking it, but the concept that's really common in the military is, is talk with, you know, talk to guns, right? And then, you're communicating by that, that sound once you're putting them down range, it's very obvious that you're set. Ready, threat. <laughs> left side, left side move, left side move. Reloading, reloading. Reloading, pick up fire, pick up fire, pick up fire. Don't run out, don't run out. Do One second. Left side, go, left side, go. Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Check your shit, go through your procedure, come up. Do not run around with your weapon on fire. Gotta go to safe. Gotta go to safe. Not that anybody did, just reiterating. Ready! Threat! Right side, move! Right side, move! Right side, move! Come on, move! Shoot, shoot, shoot! Listen! Shoot, shoot!
Don't watch for him. Shoot. I'm set. I'm set. Cease fire. Cease fire. Yeah, sorry, man. I told him to move. I thought you said left side move. Oh, my fault. My fault. No, it's I my said fault. right side. <laughs> Which just goes to show. Yeah, you see what happened there? Yep. We're close to each other. There's only two, two people shooting. We got hearing protection on. That's made by scientists. <laughs> and you still can't hear each other. Now imagine if they were shooting and we're shooting and we're more than two people. As a team leader at one time, I used to have to run to people and like grab them like <laughs> right? The, the movement techniques are more for the leadership because I'm running over to this guy like <laughs> then I'm rolling like this like <laughs> not trying to die and you're telling this guy we're going that way it's all f***ed up and nobody moves that fast because nobody wants to move like I'm not Moving if we're not organizing, you're not shooting for me. I'm not running any where. Ready? Threat! Shoot! Left side move! Left side move! He's moving! He's moving! He's moving! He's moving! Let's start to shoot! Reloading! Reloading! Let it go forward. We're gonna die! Fix that gun, fix it, fix it. Just let it go forward. Cease fire, cease fire. What's going on with it? I just got jammed up. All right, he had a jam. What'd y'all notice? They were both down. Well, they both went down, which is always bad. Yeah. One thing, he started moving, so I'm telling him, don't be looking at him moving. You just start shooting. Yep. Right? And then, also, I see him get up there. But I mentioned this earlier. When I see him get up there, it doesn't mean he's covering me yet. No. He needs to get his shit situated and start shooting. Or I ain't moving. Yeah. Right? Now, as we get more advanced, we might get into, especially when you get less repercussions of... of Dying because you're not using live ammo and we get airsoft y'all be up walking <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Right because you're like I'm not worried about anything And I've, it is acceptable to shoot and move right especially at this distance like if I got up to move I'm putting some rounds down range, too But it's we're not gonna get that point yet follow me Believe me if I'm moving. I'm not just counting on you to shoot. I'm shooting and that's where that I want to be accurate and I want to be awesome, but the reality is People aren't really that awesome that they jump up, boom, boom, and hit a seize on steel that big bobbing around trying to run their ass off to a certain other position. They're just trying to keep his head down. I'm just throwing rounds at him, and hopefully that scares the out of him. And he sees splatter, and here's the zip, and he don't shoot me. Make sense? That's the reality of it. Aaron mentioned the point, a good point. We're all getting excited. I like this. this I love this shit. You got to look before you move, right? At least that's your buddy. Before I move, I'm seeing, because he's really the only one, I mean, I don't want you to game it and look for somebody that's not here, but I want you to get in a good habit of looking left and right and make sure there's nobody there, especially if there was five of us, think about it. And I'm in the middle of the formation and I'm shooting. I'm gonna have to look left and right and make sure somebody didn't do some weird shit and you know, I'm not in somebody's way. And I'm not running in front of their gunfire, right? In this situation, at least, that safety's for damn sure. You just realize why we talk about the dust cover your gun was getting all dirty right now. Some of that shit got inside the yeah, out of my sling. Well, I'm saying it was open and it got a little dirty, but his, his charging handle was getting caught in the sling. It was back. But uh, uh, at least get those down. Make sure your gun's still going to be functioning. And you need to see at least your buddy, where he's at and what he's doing. Maybe, maybe you said, like we did earlier, somebody said move. They heard move. And they're like, I don't know, left or right. I'm moving. And you look over there and your buddy's like, and you thought you were moving, y'all both are getting up, and you're like, I gotta lay down rounds, or he's gonna die. So we gotta have that awareness, and there's a redundancy to it. Eyes, ears, guns, it's gotta get, all come into play. We got five, we got, uh, how many left? Two pairs left, right? All right, let's get up here and do it. Going hot, ready, threat! Right side move, right side move! Right side move, move you, cover. move! Set. 
Going down. Going up. He's down. He's down. Cover. Cover him. Get the gun up. Get the gun up. All right, get your gun up, get your gun up. Get your gun up, keep firing. He's getting his gun up. In there! And look, like I said before, just two people here, and how hard is it to communicate? And you ain't even deaf yet, right? If we didn't have no ear pro, we just started shooting, we're just gonna be like, <laughs> like I don't know what the saying, you're gonna be like, move all right so you got to be aware you notice you can't hear me so i'm trying to tap y'all and tell you and if you see something you're going to have somebody usually or you're going to be animated yourself if you don't have somebody directing you usually there's a team leader or a squad leader or something somebody's like trying to orchestrate every thing but you might not have that so you're gonna have to speak to each other threat left side move left side left side Keep moving Cease fire! Safety dust cover, look around. You notice that gun went into the grass? You see that muzzle? It just got great. You shot it out. But you got a little bit of muzzle in there. It wasn't deep. If it was deep, thick, I'd have grabbed you real hard, but it was just grass. Come back up, we'll talk about it. Did y'all see that? They look pretty good, huh? Kind of slower. What, why did it have to go slower? Because that's, that's as fast as it'll ever be when you're maneuvering. And this is like nothing involved. There's no cover. There's nobody shooting. This is like, it's never going to go that fast when you're maneuvering on somebody unless y'all are just ambushed and you just turn and burn, right? And they listen for each other. I know I was waiting. And I seen him hit the ground, start shooting. And I was waiting for you to notice that he's shooting and you paid attention to that. That was good. Because I'm not, like I said, I'm not moving unless he's shooting. Just because he's there does not cover me. Got to have bullets downrange. Uh, one thing he did, he didn't notice it, wasn't super bad, but going in, and I understand it's slippery down there, right? And we're, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, right? So if we can, if we can do it in this weather on this terrain, we can get down in the prone and in a lot of terrain, uh, effectively. But his, his muzzle brake went into the grass a little bit. It didn't get a chunk of mud, which could be catastrophic to some degree for your barrel if it was packed bad, bad enough, right? But it was just in the end right there and the muzzle brake and it had some grass in it and uh, it shot right out. I seen it and I was like, <laughs> but I know it didn't, I know it didn't get stamped into the ground, right? Yeah. Just be careful of that, be aware of that, especially at this angle, slipping like you are. Yeah. And that's, that's what we're being aware of. Think about all these things that you gotta be aware of. I gotta be aware of what everybody else is doing. I gotta be able to fight through the fear that I'm having and shoot somebody and apply the fundamentals while I'm doing that. So I gotta be good enough to where I can do that subconsciously. And I gotta like make sure that other random foreign shit is not affecting my ability to fight. Like my shit break in, my nods hanging off my face, which has happened before. They come off the thing and they're smacked in your face with a bungee cord and you're like, uh, uh, right? <laughs> but you got to fire because if he's moving, I don't give, and like I was telling you, and I kind of hinted to it earlier, when I get down, that gun is not necessarily in my, my best position or pocket in my shoulder. It's there and I got it lined up and I can shoot. That's all I got. And it's ugly, and it's not perfect. We practice perfect, so when we degrade under stress, it might be a somewhat effective, right? But that's what it is. That's the reality. You don't get perfect sight pictures. You don't get perfect pocket, great platform. You don't end up in the best spots ever. Shit's all You look like a dumbass. I don't care how trained you are. If you get out on the ground and you're doing battle drills and you're assaulting through something, working together, and you're really firing, and you're doing these movements like we're doing, getting up, getting down, rolling, trying not to get hit. It's so ugly. Everybody looks like shit. You, but that's the intestinal fortitude that comes in, becomes involved, where you're just fighting through, and you say, I, I just got to keep fighting. I got to make it work. Right? That's the reality of the shit. That is the reality. So if nothing else, if you never do any more training after this three days that's involved uh, with this context or scenario, 
Keep in mind this, I must not f***ing lose. I must f***ing win. And that's not a bunch of bravado shit. That's just a mindset you gotta have because everything gets And you really wanna quit because you're scared. And it's And you're mad at this guy. People, how many times have you seen somebody, you yell at another guy because, it's not necessarily because this guy's so just everything's When you get so mad, you wanna put it, take it out on somebody. And then you tell each other later, I'm sorry, you know, I was an idiot. But I'm just mad. And I'm like, move! I'm done. Yeah, man, I'm like Zen. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's very, very it's, intense, man. He's talking truth. <laughs> very intense. So, For sure. look at all the things that could go wrong and all the things that you got to be aware of. It's hard shit. It ain't the range shooting sub second uh, concealed carry drones. You'll probably, I would say, in a real world scenario, it's probably going to be a little bit slower because you're, you're not going to move without letting the guy beside you know, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move first. I'll roll over to him. Yeah. Hey. Cover me, I'm going over there. I'll be like, yeah, good, you first. <laughs> You'll feel like, there's like, it like, it like a medium ground. Like you don't want people over here having a conference with a map and shit like, hey, yeah. I'm gonna go, right? Because fire superiority, dictating the pace. But I gotta do something. So I get over there and I'm, I'm moving. And shoot, shoot. <coughs> Sees me move, put it two of two together and hopefully we get this shit done. But that's the importance of training with other guys. Now at the bare minimum, if I meet up with somebody that I've never worked with before and I've got to train with them, I, the bare minimum, I got to have the procedures down. Like, hey, this is what you're going to do. You don't move before this. You get online with me. You never shoot from behind me, especially in close proximity of me shooting behind me offline. If you're way the f over there at that tree, I don't give a f if you're online or not, as long as we're shooting in the same direction, right? But if we're here and you're here, you scare me. Get away from me. I'd rather not do things with you. <laughs> Go fight the zombies on your own on the other side of town. All right? Cool? Any questions on any of that? I know it's somewhat basic, guys, but it's, it's really a lot to it. It really is. Well, isn't that what all of it is? Is doing the fundamentals over and over until you can do them faster. Right. Repetition is exactly. the mother of all skills. Special operations, they're special because they have a lot of money, but they're special because <laughs> they should be special because they do the fundamentals very well. Yeah. The basics, the fundamentals very well. That's all there is to it. All right. That's all I got, guys. It's 1220. Um, y'all are going to be headed up the hill. We're going to eat lunch, but uh, y'all will be going to Mickey's position.